Chapter 10 Cielo sat with her head in her hands, crying as she contemplated spending the rest of her life in the dark and dangerous confines of a mine. Her body racked with sobs, aching all over from where the guards had beaten her as she sat on the floor of her cell. Their guards had departed shortly after they had been dragged back from their show trial. She wiped at her eyes in, in a silence which, had, which should have been filled with the familiar sound of Hitch's voice offering words of comfort when she noticed him sitting there with his shackled hands in front of his face. She saw something thin and metallic running from his mouth to the lock at his wrist. Head and hands bobbed and weaved ever so slightly, Hitch almost going cross-eyed as he stared down at the restraints which suddenly clicked and gave way, the shackles peeling from the, his wrists. Click! The small metallic sound of tumblers falling away caused Cielo's eyes to goggle. She burst up onto her feet. There are some who say I was a kender in a previous life, Hitch said as he stepped toward his cell door, his hands wrapping around the external lock. But I have just spent too much time around them. He inserted a tension wrench. The small flat piece of metal twisted up ever so gently with the slight application of pressure. A second piece of metal with a wavy end was inserted with his other hand, which began to rock around and around in small circles. You talk too much and listen too little, girlie, Hitch lectured as his hands worked in small deaf movements. I keep a set of lockpicks in the lining of my vest, but I couldn't reach them last night with my hands tied behind my back. There. The lock popped open, the iron gate swinging out, out, outward on its hinges. Hitch rapidly walked over to Cielo's cell and started to work. So I kept quiet and listened to what has been going on around here. He knelt down now, peering into the lock, which was proving to be a bit more uncooperative than his own had been. We'll be out of here quicker than a... Oh, for the love of rear rocks! The second lock clicked. Cielo leaping past the swinging gate to throw her arms around Hitch, almost bowling him off his feet. He crushed her to his chest for a moment before patting her on the back to signal she should let go now. What about weapons? Cielo asked as she quickly scanned around. Well, we do have this to start with. Hitch held up the heavy iron shackle and chain still attached to one of his wrists. He held the opposite cuff in the palm of his hand, the metal band wrapped around his fingers as an improvised knuckle duster. Now stick close right behind me and follow my lead, okay? Cielo nodded, sure in the knowledge that Hitch would get them out of there. Creeping up the stairs, they came to the heavy wooden door that barred their way. Gently placing his hand on the handle, Hitch turned and it gave away without resistance. In their arrogance, the guards had failed to lock the door, as no one had ever escaped their cells before. Peering through the gap, they saw a dwarf leaning back on a stool, his head resting on the wall behind him as his feet were propped up on the long counter in front. They did not appear to be moving, save for the steady rise and fall of their breathing. Fast asleep, Hitch whispered to himself. Tensing, he gently pushed the door op slowly open, looking around the edge as he did so. They were in the main foyer of the barracks, the great double doors of the entrance open wide, letting in the fresh mountain air. The bright mid-morning sun streamed through the windows, and the distant sounds of the day-to-day -day life of the village filtered through. Hitch looked over his shoulder and whispered to Cielo, I can't hear anyone else around, but we have to be sure. The guard awoke in mid-air with a sickening startle as the stairs rushed up to smash into his face, flattening his features and splitting skin. A high-pitched scream was followed by a thunderous crash as a limp body cascaded down the stairs as limp limbs were ripped around and whipped around and smacking stairs. Having gently carried the dwarf in his stool to the top of the stairs, Hitch and Cielo had heaved as one, launching the hapless guard in a curving course that bound him cover half the downward distance of the stairs before making contact face first. Retreating behind the inwardly opening door, they did not have to wait long before they heard the clomping of rapidly approaching booted feet. For Flint's sake, what in the name of Rear Ox is going on here? The commanding voice bellowed as the group drew closer. 
Cielo's muscles tensed as she drew back the heavy wooden stool. Brugen! The trio of guards cried, seeing their comrade's twisted form crumpled at the bottom of the stairs. They started to charge forward, stopping dead in their tracks as the door slammed shut behind them. Cielo could think of nothing clever to say, no catchphrase or play on words. She was just filled with a blinding rage, remembering how they had beaten her. She simply swung the stool into the nearest dwarf, twisting her torso as she threw her weight into it. Raising their arms, the rim of the seat caught them flush, bones snapping loudly as they dropped to the ground screaming. Hitch now stepped forward, extending his arm into a jab. The improvised iron knuckle duster smashed into a uniform chest, cracking ribs as the air was driven from their lungs. Tumbling backwards, they were caught by the third guard, who fell backwards, crashing down the stairs to join Brugen at the bottom. The guard with the broken arms had fainted from the pain at the top of the stairs. Hitch dragged them back onto the landing before popping the brass buttons of their uniform tunic. Throwing it on over his own clothes, he was happy to see its previous portly owner had left him plenty of room. This won't hold up for long, but it'll have to do. Flinging open the door, they found no one else in sight. Swinging the main door shut, they found an iron latch, which they locked into place. Heading down a nearby corridor, they found rooms filled with desks, stools and shelves, overflowing with scrolls and books. Opening a desk drawer, Hitch pulled out a bottle of Dwarven Spirits with triumph. Cielo looked confused as he took a long pull, before pouring out the remaining contents onto a shelf, drenching the volumes in the volatile spirit. Scooping up flint and steel from the counter of the desk where it had been left next to an unlit lamp, sparks were sent arcing through the air. Whoosh! A ball of flame erupted, causing Hitch to throw himself backwards to avoid having his eyebrows and beard singed off. They dashed from the room as the flames took hold, licking towards the ceiling as the parchment bonfire blazed. Opening a rear door, they found themselves on a balcony that looked down on the forest beyond. It was a view they would have stopped to admire if they weren't running for their lives. They clambered over the handrail, almost slipping and falling, as they slid down support beams to the ground. Glass cracked above them as the heat grew more and more intense, smoke billowing out the broken window. They made a dash for the tree line, throwing themselves through the undergrowth, sure that at any moment, unseen eyes would spot them and raise the alarm. Fire! Fire! They heard the cry going up as the villagers raced toward the building. Taking advantage of the distraction, they worked their way around the edge of the town until they could see the stables straight ahead. They knelt down for a moment to catch their breath and see if anyone was hanging around. What about the guards we left in the basement? Cielo asked, concern creasing her face at the thought of them being roasted alive. Hitch shot her a confused expression. You didn't seem all that concerned when you were beating their brains out. Cielo paused for a second. She didn't know what had made her think about them. They had certainly shown them no mercy when they had cuffed and beaten them. Let's go. Hitch hissed, interrupting her train of thought. With that, they were on their feet, running for the stable doors. They found their mules in stalls. Their caravan pushed into a corner. The harnesses and straps were hung up on the wall. They flung open the gates to the stalls, but the mules would not budge at first, having spent the time eating oats and chunks of sweet fruits cut up for them. Cielo walked around to face one of the mules. She cupped her hands either side of its face, raising its eyes to meet hers, her expression conveying how much she was not in the mood to play any games. It followed her out of the store without any resistance, its friend following close behind. They fumbled with the harnesses, their hands shaking with adrenaline as they expected someone to come through the door at any minute. Here's mine done. Tie it down. Cielo tossed the leads to Hitch as she went to the back of the caravan and pulled out her crossbow. She yanked back the cord and loaded a bolt. Another bolt clamped between her teeth. She stalked over to the big doors that led outside and saw the street empty. The smoke was thick above the rooftops, the burning scent of soot and ash on the wind. What do you think you're doing? The voice spat as a thick hand grabbed Cielo and spun her around. The owner of the stable scowled at her for a moment before his mouth popped open in pain as he stumbled backwards. A small bolt stuck out of his foot. 
Looking down, she saw she had fired the weapon without realising. The range so close, she could not miss. Racing back to the caravan, she jumped up, fumbling to lock the string back and load another bolt. Hitch leapt up beside her as he cracked the reins. The mules headed off at a trot through the heavy wooden frame of the stable entrance. They turned down a side street, heading for the edges of the village, where they worked their way along narrow lanes, side streets and alleyways. Villagers flitted past in the distance as they raced toward the fire until even the stragglers had caught up with the others. Emerging onto the main street, they turned and headed out of the village at a leisurely place designed to draw no attention from any potential onlookers. Cielo fidgeted nervously in her seat, desperate to turn and check they were not being chased, but afraid someone would spot her, sure that an angry mob would be surging toward them any minute. Please hurry, Hitch, hurry, they're going to catch us. Cielo cried as she gripped his shoulder. Caught? Ha! He scoffed. There are many things my people can do well, but running any kind of distance isn't one of them. Besides, didn't you notice in the barn that our mules were the only mounts in residence? Hitch started to relax as she loosened her grip. Makes you wonder what happened to all the animals that have been there before. I mean, surely there must have been, or else why did they have a barn and a lord that insisted we use it? At any rate, I can't help but feel relieved we didn't end up having any of those meat pies from the bakery then. Cielo suddenly felt a wave of nausea coming over her, which wasn't helped any by the rocking motion of the caravan as it made its way back onto the main road. If you're all right, just tap your foot once for yes and twice for no. 